Welcome back on stage uh, one to our next session. Our next session, a session is held by Soles, and I think in my the first it's it's um, for Canada and London placed, so really international. So it's an honor to to me to welcome Dr. Aiken Leung and Juraf Suman as our next speakers. So. As I said, both are working for Solis. Aiken is a really senior director of global channel development with an, with an impressive career and an impressive knowledge about IT. He has a lot of experience in working with big, within big international, with big international partners, sorry, in projects around the globe. He has been working with major banks and fintech companies in designing open mock data platforms, open banking platform. He has more than three years of experience, 30 years of experience and a doc doctorate degree in biomedical engineering and an MBA from Oxford. Buraf, he is he's, uh, as well a speaker from Solas in this presentation. It's a senior product marketing manager he is like Aiken, a global international experience senior manager and has joined um, Solace in 2018. But now let's, um, uh, let's give them the stage and to have an inspiring next session with these two experienced leaders. It's your stage, Aiken and Buraf. Excellent. Thank you so much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Gaurav. I'm joining you from Ottawa, Canada. I have with me Dr. Aiken Leung. Aiken? Hi, yes, I'm Aiken Leung, and a uh, pleasure to have the opportunity to meet you all. And I worked on some of the most exciting fintech projects for the past few years, and I would like to share with you here some of the trains I've seen and hope that will help you to build a more future-proof fintech platform. Excellent. Now, Ikan, before I ask you to share your experience, vision, and expertise on the topic of uh, accelerating fintech platforms, I want to take a moment and show our friends in this session here why they should listen to us. Um, Solis has been in the capital markets space for close to two decades now. And over these years, we've been a critical part of the success and growth of some of the largest financial institutions on the planet. These include exchanges, banks, trading desks, and we serve them all over the world. We are headquartered in the Canadian capital city of Ottawa, where I'm based, and we have offices and staff all over the world. With that said, Aiken, let me switch gears now and ask you some questions on behalf of our attendees. Are you ready, Aiken? Sure, yeah, fire away. Okay. Excellent. So I wanted to ask you first, the concept of FinTech has been around for, for quite a while now. Most mature companies, they have implemented FinTech in some shape or form. My question to you is, what do you think they will need to do in the coming years to be able to differentiate their business? Sure, all right. Next slide. Yeah, so uh, basically we have seen three trends that uh, you know, are making some of the FinTechs really stand out. You know, as you know, it's a very crowded and competitive FinTech world, right? And you need to be really differentiate yourself there. So let's talk about the first trend, you know, to be more connected. So with the help of open API or, you know, just API management in general, we are seeing fintechs are connecting with other fintechs, with more banks, and increasingly with more and more SaaS providers as well, you know, such as SAP or Salesforce, and to be more integrated with the enterprise solutions, you know, such as ERP, supply chain management, or, you know, CRMs, right? And another integration pattern we've seen with FinTech is the direct integration with IoT platforms, you know, trying to get IoT data firsthand to help customer experience as well as operational efficiency, right? And with all those integration patterns, you start to see marketplaces or ecosystem being formed and promoted and to help FinTechs to partner together and also innovate together. So once you are more connected, you need to be more intelligent with your data. You know, some of them embedded in API service calls and some of them are straight IoT sensor data. 
and they are start to flow you know, across different fintech landscapes. Uh, they are effectively events. You know, if you can get hold of those events in real time and apply your AI uh, machine learning analytics and truly improve on your customer experience, right? And you may say, hey, you know, we've already uh, doing it, but how real time can you do when you actually, you know, so distributed and it's also having so much data coming in and out of the system and so uh, via so many channels. So we are talking about really sub-second kind of uh, response after you have a good understanding of your customer, right? The traditional API calls coupling with the data lakes analytics may not be good enough. And you need to be really thinking about event-driven architecture and event streaming. You know, being real time is really the key here. And in the third column, you know, you can see that we also need to be more agile, not only in serving your customers and partners in a more real-time fashion, but creating a platform where you can roll out new products or solutions in days rather than weeks, right? The ability to test out new ideas in a low cost and short go-to-market time is a true differentiation in competing with others and of course winning your customers over. So, and here's the example, um, next slide, please. yeah. Here's the example of what's happening in the automotive industry, right? It's a very crowded landscape, as you can see here, you know, from, you know, on-demand transportation, you know, apps such as the Ubers and Grabs, and to fintechs for car rental, car buying, park car loans, insurance payment, telematics, you know, where you get the, the actual kind of vehicle data and roadside assistance, et cetera. So imagine you can just sit down and then pick on, picking the capabilities offered by those fintechs and combining them and then turn it into an innovative business solution for yourself and to help your customers better. So this is the concept of a super app, right? Where one app to rule them all, to give the best customer experience possible. So a good super app example is like Grab, you know, where they started as like a, a Uber killer, you know, and but now turn it into a full kind of digital bank that offers all kind of daily lifestyle activities to their customers and via their single app, right? To be a super app, you definitely need to be well connected and, you know, smarter and super agile. That is, that is amazing. That's really exciting. So it can now for our audience, um, what can a business do to accelerate their fintech journey? Yeah. So the, the first of challenges from the technology side, you know, we can see that the connectivity, you know, can be quite complex in a nowadays, you know, uh, IT landscape. You've got different kind of environments uh, that fintechs or banks sitting in, right? You've got public clouds, private clouds, on-prem, you know, IoT environment you need to think about, think about, and also the kind of SaaS kind of providers all sitting in a different environment as well. So all the kind of cloud native tools tend to, tend to log you in into the single cloud, and then you find it very difficult and very expensive to share data or moving your apps about. You know, this is actually quite a challenge, but saying that, you know, this is a technology challenge, it's actually quite straightforward to sort it out, right? Build a event mesh yourself, you know, where you can catch it, connect all the different environments in a, in, in, a, in a very kind of simple way. And then you'll start to move your, your data and your apps, you know, quite freely. Next step. Next slide, please. Yeah. So this is one of the characteristics of the building that event mesh that you need to be really in the kind of a real time um, um, kind of paradigm, right? So you see this is a, a Gartner uh, paper talking about, you know, the more... Uh, you know, uh, non-real-time you are, you know, like going to the, the kind of uh, sub-seconds to second to minute, and your value of the data is actually going straight down, right? So to unlock this value, you really need to be in the kind of left-hand side, sub-second area to be more predictive and preventive rather than in the kind of historical data where lots of people, a lot of companies actually typically do, like, you know, daily batch mode and et cetera, right? Next slide, please. So this is the, the what's the view at the end of the day is that you have an event mesh 
build up. And then looking at these kind of uh, microservices built, talking to this event mesh to exchange data, exchange events, you got a synchronous, you know, fast path, we call it, where you can actually do the normal kind of payment process, let's say, this is example here. But at the same time, in parallel, you can actually, you know, move those data into your inside kind of data lakes, into your, for example, your, you know, data tracing, uh, you know, uh, uh, infrastructure, more immutable ledger, for example, provide, provided by Tradex, for example. And then, of course, you can do all kind of risk audit analysis. And then uh, that's all happening in real time in parallel, right? This is the, you know, the, the, the final kind of, uh, you know, architecture you're trying to achieve where you really provide the more agile, you know, more timely and then a much better user experience. This is great. Makes uh, makes a lot of sense, Aiken. Um, all right, that's that's it from us for this quick session. Let me just ask our moderators if there's any questions we should take. Yeah, really precise in time. Thanks for that. I would have a question. If someone would go uh, or decide for you going into the journey to implement uh, your your um, solution. How long does this take? How fast is this going? Right. So, of course, this depends on the scales, right? So, we help customers, you know, from like a building a digital bank, you know, within three months. We will actually help customers achieve that with this kind of uh, flexible architecture. So, because the hard work, the plumbing side is already done on the event mesh. So, you don't need to care about the different kind of cloud native, you know, properties or tools that you, 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 know, you need to use, just concentrate on writing your microservices for, for your business logic and then plug into that event mesh, the whole thing, you know, just, you know, just work nicely. So we've done that within three months to put up a, a bank, which with something like 20 million uh, accounts, customer accounts is quite a big, uh, you know, uh, big bank, yeah. Okay, thanks, thanks. The next are already waiting on stage, but this is possible. As well, a really good and inspiring interview. Thanks for having you as well again at DKF. And um, yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. And enjoy DKF. Very good. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you Thank very you. much. Bye. Bye.